So, hello everyone and welcome back to another video. And I'm pretty sure everyone has heard about the RTX 3080 and 3090 having problems with their capacitors. And whenever something that interests people is going along, I of course have to capitalize on that. So here I'm going to explain what's happening from an overclocker modder perspective. So actually Artco Overclocking or Bootsoid already made a pretty nice video about this uh, where he explains in probably even more detail uh, what the difference between the SMD polymer caps and the multi-layer ceramics are. And he also says how they are not called POS caps because these are not POS caps. POS caps is a kind of these that Panasonic makes. These are not POS caps, these are SMD uh, polymer capacitors. So yeah. Um, here we have my cap model GTX 580 and this is pretty much the best example I have of showing you what uh, the RTX 3080 and 3090 have for their problem. Just that this is a reverse of that. So um, let's first start with what's going on here. So there you, you can see there are a lot of extra capacitors on this card. Let's ignore this part, this is a volt mod. Uh, you see all these extra capacitors. Like these ones are on memory, this one is on memory, and all of these are for the core. Now, what these are doing is they're adding extra capacitance to the VRM of either the core or the memory. And what, ha what this does is when the core suddenly goes under a lot of load, like when the core starts doing some very heavy things, like uh, doing a lot of calculations, um, it starts to pull a lot of current through the VRM and the VRM needs some time to react to that change in current draw because when the current draw changes uh, you, know, you know the formula for power which is voltage times current and if the current changes the voltage also changes uh, and in this case the voltage drops and the VRM needs time to react to that voltage drop to raise the voltage again so the card doesn't undervolt and crash. Um, and one way to improve the VRMs, not really the reaction time, but the response to this is having extra capacitors. Because while the VRM is still reacting and not raising the voltage, the card is pulling power from the capacitors because they have power stored in them. And that keeps the voltage up and prevents it from going down. And the more capacitors you have, the longer you can uh, force the voltage to stay up. So the longer it takes for the voltage to go down, the more time the VRM has to react to the voltage change without having the card crash. Um, that's basically a very short uh, yeah, version of that. I have made a dedicated video on cap mods that goes in a little bit more detail, but that's like the short version. The capacitors are like a reservoir that when the card pulls a lot of power suddenly, they uh, deplete the stored power before the VRM reacts. So, uh, what's happening on the 3080 is you have not enough of these, basically. Um, so, the 3080 and 3090, which I'm just gonna call 3080 by now, like both of these cards, they're, they're, they're basically the same card with a little bit more memory and a few more cores. Um, so, Specifically, this is about the capacitors behind the core, but like all of these are connected to the same thing, they're just in different places. Now having them behind the core makes them a bit better because they're closer to the thing you're trying to power, so pulling energy from them is easier. But generally it's the same thing. I could have put these behind the core, but here it looks better and I have more space. So, um, what the 3080 has is it has an array of six either SMD polymers or multi-layer ceramic capacitors replacing the polymers and then some have uh, a mix of that where they have one or two spots uh, with multi-layer ceramics and then SMD polymers. So the SMD polymers in this case are yellow, most of the time they're black, these ones are yellow and then the multi-layer ceramics are the little capacitors in between them. So the 3080 PCB has the option to either use these big SMD polymer uh, capacitors or use 10 multi-layer ceramic capacitors in their place. For the actual capacitance, you're pretty much the same. Like if you have one 470, uh, 470 microfarad uh, SMD polymer or 10 47 microfarad SMD uh, multi-layer ceramics, 
you both get the same um, same capacitance. The difference is, if you have more capacitors, it takes longer to produce the card because you have 10 times more things to put on the PCB. Uh, it increases the cost because these multi ceramics are in bulk, like uh, by capacitance, they are more expensive than the SMD polymers. And what it also does, it improves uh, how these capacitors are acting. So not every capacitor does the same. Actually, these can type ones that I've put on here are the worst. Um, but they're still doing things. They're just not as good as the SMD polymers, and the SMD polymers are not as good as the multilayer ceramics. Um, because the multilayer ceramics have less resistance and less inductance. So in the real world, everything, every component has a bit of resistance and inductance. And the less of that you have, the better a capacitor is at doing its thing. And the multilayer ceramics have the least of that, then the polymers, then the can types. And so what happens is when you have all SMD polymers and no multilayer ceramics is the capacitor array that you have has a high enough resistance and inductance so that it is now worse at um, keeping the voltage up when the card goes under load. Uh, and the VRM is now not fast enough to react. So the voltage drops and it drops so much that the core will crash at these, what you hear, around 2 gigahertz, which seems to be uh, the, the mo for most 3080s. And yeah, so that's basically the thing. The more cost-optimized capacitor array is, like it can't keep the voltage up for long enough until the VRM reacts. So the voltage goes down and it goes down so far that the core crashes at these around 2 gigahertz frequencies. Now, fixing that is actually pretty easy. Um, so for everyone who doesn't overclock their 3080 and just uh, complains about the crashing, NVIDIA actually already has fixed that. There was a driver update today, I think, that changed the boost curve. So the cards no longer hit that 2 gigahertz um, range stock. So the maximum boost frequency has been slightly reduced which that's not ripping people off. The cards have like an advertised speed of 1700 megahertz. So two gigahertz is not where it's advertised to be. And well, the difference between 1900 and 2000 megahertz is not all that big. Um, so yeah, just lowering the clocks a bit basically saves the down costed 3080s from crashing, which Nvidia has already done. The other way to fix this is just, well, you gotta replace uh, at least some of the SMD polymers with multilayer ceramics, which Der Bauer has also done already there. He made a video today where he took a 3080 that had all SMD polymers and he replaced two of these with multilayer ceramics. And the card ended up boosting a little higher. Like, it's, it's not a huge increase. Like, all these caps that I put on gave me like 20, 30 megahertz and about the same uh, was gained on the 3080 that Dembauer modified. But that, twen that 20 to 30 megahertz difference is the difference that makes the card crash normally. Uh, and now with the card being more stable, it will now run at these around 2 gigahertz and not crash anymore. So yeah, so what's really happening on the 3080 is basically a reverse of what most modders do with their cards we put caps on to make the voltage regulation better. And these 3080s come with not powerful enough capacitor banks to have the voltage regulation that they need. So technically, if I had a 3080 that's crashing, like as if I had enough money for that, <laughs> or as if someone wanted to send me review samples. Um, yeah, if I had a 3080 and like, I would just RMA it, or ju just like return it, because soldering on this will void your warranty, and the 3080 is, there's definitely not a single 3080 that has a voided warranty by yet, because, well, normally you have at least two years. Um, so yeah. So I wouldn't recommend soldering to these, unless you're like a reviewer, or like you purposely fully bought the card to mod it, knowing that you're going to void the warranty. 
But like normal users, just down may or return the card. Or just like if you're okay with the fix, but like I would like to overclock my card and if you have to reduce the boost clock to keep it from crashing, there's practically zero overclocking headroom. Um, but yeah, theoretically you could fix this by just, well, cap modding the card, like here. Putting more capacitors on the card. Maybe also putting some modular ceramics on there and, and not like these can types that I have. Um, I could try to put some modular ceramics onto future cards, I just don't. I harvested some of them from dead cards, but I have no idea how much capacitance and what voltage rating they are. So, yeah, that's why I mostly use these these capacitors. But theoretically, you could fix the 3080s that are crashing by doing this exact thing to them. It's just not practical <laughs> for people who just want the card to game on it. For modders, yes, but for people who just want a game. Not really a good idea, though it is a fix. Um, but yeah, that's what happening. That's what is happening on um, the 3080. It's a reverse cap mod. You instead of putting more caps on it, uh, Nvidia designed the PCBs with, like, the Thornis edition actually doesn't have the problem. Like uh, a thing that a lot of people are saying is like, oh, the board partners of uh, are at fault. Like MSI, Gigabyte, Zotac designed their PCBs wrong. That's not the case. NVIDIA has designed guidelines for these PCBs and when MSI Gigabyte or Zortec want to make a PCB, they hand the designs for that PCB to NVIDIA and NVIDIA says if it's okay or not. So all of these cards that are out there right now and crashing have been approved by NVIDIA under their own design uh, guidelines. So the board partners are not at fault here, it's NVIDIA not telling them, oh this is gonna crash because probably NVIDIA didn't know, they didn't do enough R&D or like Nvidia didn't know that they're gonna factory overclock the card or I don't know. It's it's not the board partners cheaping out on the PCB on purpose and then having them crash because they didn't design it properly. Nvidia approved the PCBs. So if anyone's at fault here, it's Nvidia for approving non-working PCBs. Uh, just wanna get that out there because I saw a lot of people flaming board partners for this which they're not at fault for. It's, it's like EVGA having their VRMs blow up because they got faulty components. It's not EVGA designing the PCB wrong, it's their suppliers giving them faulty parts. So, yeah. And to not get uh, make this into another 20 minute video, I'm gonna end it here. Um, yeah, short explanation of what's happening on the 3080 and 3090, why they're crashing. Um, and yeah. So, thank you all for watching, hope you enjoyed, and until we see each other next time. Goodbye.